Hey guys, it's Dr. E with the manualtherapist.com and OMVTchannel.com. A reader recently asked about management of a young man with uh, diagnosed true structural instability like spondylolisthesis or spondylolysis. Uh, well, Ben, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, my answer is pretty much the same thing that I would answer to all questions. Uh, what about this and what about this? What about rotator cuff? What about herniated disc? In the end, it's all uh, based on what your evaluation tells you. So since I'm heavily MDT based, I don't really go on the diagnosis because the diagnosis doesn't really tell me anything about the patient. They may have a diagnosed spondylolisthesis or a diagnosed uh, spondylolysis. Heck, I think I have a grade one or two spondylolisthesis. Um, it hasn't been confirmed on x-ray, but I used to have a palpable step and I used to have some back pain. But you know what? I still respond to extension and I still respond to movement and uh, maintenance um, uh, or, or, you know, breaking up prolonged static postures. So you're still going to look for a directional preference and you're still going to see if flexion, uh, repeated flexion helps them, or repeated extension helps them. Or if it's unilateral, we're still going to look for does repeated side gliding to the involved side help them. So if it's right side, you're going to shift to the right, and if it's left, you're gonna, left side, you're going to shift to the left. Um, in, in general, in terms of manual therapy, what you may find with uh, even a younger patient is that they have restricted hip extension. Uh, you want to you you want to make sure though that you're not know, ad nauseum stretching away at what you perceive to be a tight psoas because it may be uh, motor control stability. So if you check them actively and they have limited hip extension, make sure to check them passively because actively I had limited hip extension, but passively I had uh, a lot of hip extension. So if active is much greater than passive, that's a motor control stability issue, and they need. They need, uh, you know, appropriate strategies to control that or to coordinate the motion. Uh, you will find also that they may have a stiff thoracic spine. So if they do have limited hip extension and a stiff and a stiff uh, thoracic spine, what you what you really want to do is improve the mobility of the joints or the areas above and below. So if extension is a problem for them, if they have a, you know, a spondy and, and ex extension actually increases their symptoms and makes them worse, you just want to decrease the moment of hyperextension or instability to lumbar spine by improving the ability of the hips to open up and the ability of the thoracic spine to straighten up. So uh, that's typically how I manage those things manually. Um, but again, in the end, it's not the diagnosis that matters because the, what their spine looks like when they're lying in a tube does not tell you how they move, and it doesn't tell you uh, whether it's dysfunctional, non-painful, dysfunctional, painful, or it doesn't tell you uh, how a repeated motion or a sustained position also affects their complaints. So always go on what your evaluation states and not what the diagnosis states.